All right, you might be wondering what is action painting? Well, action painting is a type of painting where the artist has very spontaneous, which means not predictable, movements. Paint can be dripped or splashed or smeared onto the canvas, and it's not applied very, very carefully. In fact, artists don't know exactly what the end result will look like. The final painting shows the physical movements that the artist made, sort of like a record of what exactly happened while they were painting. Action painting was really popular in the 1940s and 1950s. The term action painting was made up by the American critic Harold Rosenberg in 1952 in an essay that he wrote where he said that the canvas was a place for action. Over the next 20 years, thinking about art as an act instead of just being a final object like a finished canvas, or thinking about art as a process instead of a final product became a really big deal. It became sort of like a base layer in society for a lot of other art movements afterwards. This is a woman named Lee Krasner. She is a really famous action painter. And action painters often worked very large. You can see behind her how big her work is. Here's another close up of a different painting by the same artist. In this example, I'm showing you one of the most famous action painters work, and his name was Jackson Pollock. Here you can see a photo of him dripping paint onto a really large canvas. And here you can see people standing in front of one of his very large canvases in a museum. A great way to find out more about Jackson Pollock and his work and other action painters and how they worked is the book series by Mike Venezia called Getting to Know the World's Artists. Now I want to show you an action painting project that you can try at home. First, you'll need something to put down to work on so that you don't ruin your surface. I like to use newsprint and you could put down more sheets than this. You could use old newspapers or a bit of a plastic bag. I like to use newsprint because whatever splatters I get on the edges, then I can use those extra pieces for other art projects. I'm going to tape down my paper at all four corners. If you're going to work outside, you should do the same. Tape down those corners. You don't want the wind to do extra actions on your action painting. All right, my paper's all taped down. And again, you might want a little more surface area to cover your space if you're going to do an action painting. Now I have my paper that I'm actually going to work on. My paper for this video was sized 12 inches by 18 inches. Here I'm showing you how to make tape rolls so that you can put light tape underneath your painting that will come off easily. I'm using masking tape. I'm putting about three or four tiny little tape rolls underneath my painting so that it sticks to this base layer and doesn't blow around. Here I'm going to show you my supplies. I like to use egg cartons, the bottoms to hold my paints, and the top for a great place to mix all my colors. It's a good way to reuse an item. I have a jar of water, I have a spoon, I have a paintbrush to mix my colors, I have a fork for dripping, a straw, an old toothbrush, one of those things that you end up with after you do water balloons, a sponge, and a paper towel. And I'm ready to go. Now let's talk color mixing. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue, just a little, and I'm next gonna pick up just a lot more white because I want my first color to be a bit of a light blue. I'm rinsing out my brush in between those colors in my water and adding quite a bit more white than blue. And I'm using that brush just to mix everything up. It takes me a little while to work through it, I do lots of little circles to get it evenly mixed. 
Now, I want my, wa my paint to be thin to be able to have an action painting. So what I'm doing is adding some water to my egg tray and I wanna thin my paint out a little bit. And I'm not quite satisfied with how much water I could get from my brush. So I'm plugging up the straw a little bit and holding water in it and then dropping it over onto my mixing tray. Then I'll take my brush and I'll mix it all over again. This gives me a texture of paint that's a lot thinner and a lot easier to make it make action or make it move on my painting. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Okay, and now I've got my toothbrush. I'm gonna get it really um, wet first so that it can absorb some of that paint and I'm gonna do little circles to get to pick up some paint. Now you can see how I'm sliding my finger across the surface of the bristles, but when I'm pointing it down to the paper, it sprays all over my paper. I can really direct where I want it to go by angling my hand and keeping my hand really close to my paper. You'll be able to experiment with this too. Okay, now I'm rinsing my fingers a little bit because after I use a toothbrush, I'm pretty messy. So I'm using my water jar and I'm just dabbing them off on my paper towel. Now I'm gonna use my straw. I'm tipping my wet paint a little bit so I can get it down into like a puddle to pick it up with the straw. By plugging my finger on the top of the straw, I can hold it in there. And then by releasing it over the paper, I let the paint go where I want it and I can choose when to let it go and how I want it to be directed by splashing it down with a certain direction. Once I have some paint puddles on that I'm happy with, I can use my straw in another way and I can angle my body a little lower and blow the paint around on the paper if it's thin enough. If it's too thick, you won't be able to do this and you can try again by thinning out your paint. It would be pretty boring to watch me work really slowly. So here I'm showing you everything I'm doing with my straw super fast. And then I'm mixing a little bit of another color in to make sort of a violet color. So I mix a tiny bit of red made of a little bit of a purplish violet color. And then I'm just using the paint that's thin and spl splashing it all over the paper. The great thing about action painting is that you can be creative and use all kinds of tools. Jackson Pollock was even known for using crazy things like egg beaters to splash his paint around his canvas. Here I'm using the paint that's left on my mixing tray, adding a little bit of black and a little bit of white to make sort of a purplish gray. And after my paint is all mixed up, I'm gonna use that blue tool on my tray. And like I mentioned before, that's one of those tools that you're left with after you are done having water balloons um, filled up at the hose, you have this long tube thing. And I have found that they're really cool to do lots of action and fun printing with. So I'm gonna pick that up next and I'm gonna drag it through my paint and then I'm going to experiment with how I can make that splash and make action on my paper. And you'll see me work really fast again so that I can speed up the video. Okay, so now that you've experimented with some other random things, we're going to um, thin out the paint that we have and just even use the brush and the actual uh, mixing tray itself by thinning it out I can actually pour it from the mixing tray right onto the canvas and direct it that way So you can even be creative just with a brush and your mixing tray Depending on how thinned out you can get that paint watch me pour it See how you can see the trail of where the paint has been or where my hand has been to be able to make it splash that way That really shows the action After I use up a bit of my gray, I'm adding some yellow and some blue so that I can make a little bit of a green. 
and there's a tiny bit of gray left in my mixing tray and that is okay it'll just have like a toned down green color which is really great for me I like that a lot so I'm mixing it very well with my brush and now I'm going to add a little water to thin it out you can see the next tool I pick up is a sponge and I get my sponge wet first because that's going to help it absorb more of the paint and it will thin it out so that I can have that action happening. So I'm squeezing out the excess water, putting a little bit more into my mixing tray to thin out my paint, mixing it all up with my brush. And then I can actually use the sponge as an action tool. So I'm going to soak up my paint and as I squeeze out my paint from the sponge, I can see the pattern of action of how it's splattering around on the page and really be experimental with that motion. Now that I have some puddles, I can go back to my other tools and experiment. Maybe using that straw will blow some of the paint around on the paper in an interesting way. Again, remember, action painting is spontaneous. And here I'm speeding it up so you can see me go super fast. And the other tool that I want to show you is something as simple as a plastic fork or a plastic spoon. So I can pick up some paint. I'm picking up white paint here and I'm just splattering it downward. The white paint's thin enough for me to get a little bit of action. And since I already have paint on my paper, I can see the white paint show up on as a top layer. You could do this as well with a, a spoon, a plastic spoon or a plastic knife. Now I know you are really excited to get your materials and start your painting. So I wasn't going to make you sit through me painting for another 10 minutes. So I thought I would show you super fast how I finish up my work and what it looks like at the end. Enjoy. For cleanup, I want to make sure that I carefully take the tape off of everything, but I'll still keep my paper on my newsprint. It'll be easier for me to carry it inside this way. I want to put all of my tools into my water jar because I'll clean them out really well and use them for future action paintings. I'll throw away my egg carton and clean off my tray and make sure my workspace is clean. I hope that you have fun using whatever tools that you have at home or in a class, if you're in a class, to do this project and make an action painting of your very own.